Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a leak code problem and the problem's name is evaluate reverse Polish notation. So in this question, we're given an array of strings called tokens and that represents an arithmetic expression in a reverse Polish notation. So a reverse Polish notation can also be called as a postfix operation. And by definition, a postfix operation is that first the operands will be present and then the operator will be present. So this is the operator, which can be addition, subtraction, multiplication or division symbol. And these are the operands which are integers. So generally you write 2 plus 3, right? But in reverse Polish notation, you write 2, 3 plus. So this is a postfix operation. And we are given few nodes. And these are the only operators which will be present. Each operand may be an integer or another expression. For example, this is, so this is one operand. And this is the second operand. And initially, if you start, this is one operand, this is one operand, and this is the operator. And the division between any two numbers always truncates towards zero. There will not be any division by zero. So we can assume that there is always going to be a valid arithmetic expression in reverse Polish notation. So for example, there won't be any test cases where until you get two opponents, there won't be any operator. So the input won't be invalid. Like two plus three will be invalid, but such test cases won't be present. And the answer and all the intermediate calculations can be presented in a 32-bit integer. So it will fall inside the range of an integer. Now let's take a look at these examples and see how we can form the logic. So let's take the first example. So these two are the operands and this is the operator. So this sequence can be written as 2 plus 3, but in reverse police it is written as 2, 3 plus. So we know we have to add these two because the operator is addition. So we have to store these two somewhere and apply this operator on these two stored variables. So a good data structure to use will be a stack where we are going to store the operands and whenever you encounter a uh, operator that is plus minus multiplication or division we will pop these operands from the stack and perform the operation so let's take an example and see how the stack operation will be performed on this example so we start iterating from left to right as soon as you find a operator we pop the elements if you find a integer you directly add them into the stack it's a 2 so add it into the stack from the top the next character we access is 1 which is also an integer so if it is an integer directly add it into the stack the next character is a operator plus so pop the first element out of the stack and store it inside a variable so this is important we store it inside a variable num2 so 1 will be stored inside num2 and now we pop another integer once we encounter operator it means we have at least two integers inside the stack now we pop the second one so once you pop it the element will be returned and the returned element I'm storing inside a variable and it will be removed from the stack. Now perform the plus operation on these two. So if you add these two, you get three. So this is an integer, right? So add this into the stack. So three will be added into the stack. Now the next character is an integer. So add it into the stack. So the result, which was initially three, will be resetted back to zero. And now the next character is a multiplication operator. Once you encounter an operator, pop the element from the stop and store it inside num2 pop the next element and store it inside nums1 now perform the multiplication operation so the result is num1 into num2 3 into 3 is 9 so add this element into the stack because that is the result and in the next iteration we reach the end of the stack so we end our iteration and now whatever is present inside the stack that will be returned as the output so the output is 9 which is returned here now let's implement the same steps in a java program and then we'll debug the code for this test case so this is the function given to us and this is the input tokens so like i said we need to declare a stack which will contain strings because this is a string array now let's iterate through the input so this is an array right so i'll use a for each loop which will access one string at a time so for so we have to access tokens which is a string array so i create a string called token which will access all the tokens and this is the variable name which will iterate through the tokens now we have to identify if the character is an operator or not, right? So this is an operator and this is an operator. So I'll use a helper function which will return a boolean value, true or false, based on the input given to it. So I'll name it is operator and this will be a string. Now I have to check if the string is one of the four operators. So str dot equals. So first I have to check if it is a plus sign or I'll copy this and paste it three times for the remaining three operators. So second operator is minus, third operator is multiplication, and fourth operator is division. 
so if it is an operator i have to return true and outside the if statement if it is not an operator it will return false and now i have to call this function inside the main function so i'll call the function is operator so if this input token which we are iterating through the input array is an operator this will return true so once this is an operator like i said i have to access the two characters so let's do a dry run simultaneously for the second example so first 4 will be added into the stack since it is an integer next 13 will be added 5 will be added next the operator is division so if it is a division i have to pop the first element out and store it inside num2 so num2 is equal to 5 I have to pop the second operand and num1 is equal to 13 so let's write the code until here so we encountered a division operator and top of the stack has 5 and second element has 13 so int num2 is equal to stack dot pop will give you 5 but stack contains in strings but we are storing it inside an integer so i have to convert the string into an integer so i'll use the integer dot parse int method so this will give me num2 i'll copy this so first we popped 5 and stored it inside num2 next we popped 13 and stored it inside num1 so num1 will be 13 now we have to check what type of operator it is so i'll write four if statements so if this token is an operator only it will come inside so i have to check if this token dot equals plus operator i have to add num1 and num2 inside a variable result so i'll create a variable int result and initially it will be 0 and inside the if statements if it is a plus so result is equal to num1 plus num2 and now we have to repeat for minus multiplication and division so i'll copy this and place it inside else if block if this operator is a minus then we have to do num1 minus num2 and i'll copy this again and do multiplication so if the operator is a multiplication operator it will be num1 into num2 and finally again i'll copy this once if it is a division then it will be num1 by num2 and the result is calculated now we have to calculate the result so result is equal to num1 and the operator is division so num1 by num2 so we have to do 13 by 5 and this is an integer right so we'll get 2.3 and it will take only 2 as the integer now this is a 2 now this is the result and we have to add this result back into the stack so 2 will be added here so instead of adding tag dot push of result for every if statement we can do it outside the if statements in order to reduce the redundant line of code we'll push this result outside the if statements so stack dot push of result but this result is an integer variable and stack contains strings so we have to convert this integer into a string so i'll use the integer dot to string method and place this result inside as parameter so this result which was integer will be converted into a string and it will be pushed into the stack and now the else block so now the else block states that the opposite of this statement so if the input string is not a operator so if these are integers this statement will be executed so what did we do if there were integers we just push them into the stack directly so stack dot push and push the token which is already a string so push it directly into the stack so we add that token directly into the stack and now this will happen for all the tokens present inside and let's complete our operation now we have and now in the next iteration it is a plus right so the operator is a plus so we have to pop the element and add it inside num2 so num2 will now have 2 and pop the second operand and add it inside num1 and since the operator is plus we have to add the two operands so 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 and now we have to add this result back into the stack so 6 will be added back into the stack and we reach the end of the iteration so whatever is present inside stack will be returned as the output so 6 is returned as the output so let's return whatever is present inside stack so here before ending we have to return whatever is present inside stack so the return type is an integer but stack contains strings right so we have to convert this string into a integer so i'll use the integer dot percent and the topmost element is stack dot peak so stack dot peak will give you the topmost element now let's try to run the code the test case are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n where n is the length of the string where n is the length of the string array tokens 
And the space complexity is also often because we're using the stack to compute the output. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.